Apple Glasses are now out there thing, along with MetaQuest 3, which is an augmented reality. We're starting to enter the age of augmented reality. I love that video. It was actually set up. That actually wasn't a real thing, but I'm sure there's people who are doing this. And when you're wearing augmented reality glasses, which I have a pair, not Apple, but I have the MetaQuest, it's like a whole new world. It's a whole new thing, and there's a lot of fun to it. There's incredible technologies that are coming in the future through it that are going to cause everything from surgeries to go differently to industrial revolution that can happen because of controlling things from robotics via augmented reality and mass forms. There's so many different types of applications for why we could use augmented reality and it creates a virtual space that is layered on our actual space. I mean, I've seen videos where people are going through and they actually set screens on their refrigerator and they, they have you know their, their to-do list on their refrigerator for what needs to be bought in their store. Uh, from the store and they can be looking real time what's going on to different types of entertainment zones in their house and so this is a new thing that is going to change everything you know you could be looking at your boarding pass if you're wearing apple glasses you could actually see your, your your new departure time and your new gate without actually having to look it up in a traditional way of your hand actually pressing buttons and telling you know it's intuitive in other words so there's an intuitiveness to the technology that takes away the user having to interface directly by speaking or even pressing buttons, but actually it's intuitive to the world around you. I've seen this go all the way to the degree that in the future people will be wearing these on the street, and instead of a movie showing a trailer, you're gonna see Spider-Man swing you know, right next to you and fight a, a bad guy right in front of you as you're walking, and it'll be part of your virtual experience layered over your real experience. Remember, with great power comes great responsibility. And so people are showing up in stores, I don't know if you've seen this yet, or in places, and they're wearing these devices regularly. I mean, it, luckily they only have a few hour batteries so you can't wear them all day, but people are wearing them as part of their real life experience. And they're having an online experience as part of their virtual world now and their real world emerging together. And it's creating a new state of existence we've never quite experienced before, especially because it's a mass produced experience. And what iPhones were to releasing even the elderly and the youngest into technologies, I mean, they were bringing iPads into the middle of jungles and two and five year olds were just immediately intuitive to how to use an iPad who'd never even seen technology before. I mean, I remember some of the stories I've read about this, but you know, these, the virtual reality is now or augmented reality is now being impacted because companies are making it so user friendly. Now, I think part of this personally is a God design. I think that God made us to be enhanced by technology and to be able to use technologies to solve problems we could never solve without them, to have supercomputers, to have uh, processors and added thinking that we would never have, and, and to have help. I like having robot assistants. As some of you think they're all spies working for governments or agencies that have insidious agendas. They usually are. I'm pretty basic, so if they're coming to spy on me, there's not a lot of, to spy on me and my family. If Alexa, the most she spies on is what we need to do in our shopping list and might refer some things to us. But it's nice to have Alexa and Siri and these kinds of things. I look at uh, Elon Musk and his new robot that he wants to release and believes that there will be over 100 million of these deployed over the next 25 years or whatever his number is. And for these actual robots that will be in your house doing dishes and, and vacuuming all these kinds of things. And I think we live in a time, like a blessed time to have help so we can actually be more about what is important and valuable in life. When it, it comes to technology, it could be a support for deeper meaning and deeper connection or it can take away. And I think it depends on who's using it and who's in charge of it. And so it's gonna be very interesting to watch in the future. And some of you are, you have your eyes on it too. Well, some of you though, are immediately, you you know things that maybe some of us don't know. And so you're, you're like, wait a minute, you need to know what the plans are behind these things and the big picture. And then others of you have already looked at this as if you join up with any technology, especially when it comes to like Apple glasses, it could be the end of your humanity and you could be giving yourself to an antichrist, spirit of the world system. Basically. Well, before technology though, would ever be just the enemies, God is the author of all new things that are good. Hashtag preach. And technology in itself is not evil. The love of technology or the misuse of technology, the abuse of technology is what's evil. And so I think we could look at technology and even what's out in our generation. And like my parents, when computers first came out, they were nervous. They were they thought it could be really bad to have a computer in our house. And they were worried about all kinds of things. And Christianity at that time, especially in the charismatic world, had all kinds of hypotheses on why it's evil. And that now my parents, you know, they, it's a daily part of their life. They couldn't imagine living without their pads and their phones and everything else. 
like the rest of us, but it took a while for that generation to adopt. They weren't early adopters, especially when it came to Christians, because a lot of times Christians, we fantasize about how the enemy wants to use these things versus actually thanking God for technologies that have come and then getting, you know, starting companies alongside of them or starting, you know, to use them for all the right reasons within whatever we're doing. And I think it's really important that we look at that. But Danger, Will Robinson. I do want to also state the dangers of some of these technologies, because as much as I love Apple glasses and MetaQuest 3, you know, that's part of the danger is not just the inherent dangers of the, these companies. They are they are literally trying to sell your information, which is selling a part of you that you should have ownership over to corporations to be able to look at you as a means to end to create more finances and make money. I mean, Meta's classic, a classic example of the abuse of power of this over and over, been having to address Congress. I mean, Mark Zuckerberg has been accused by many good organizations and many bad organizations as data mining you as you are his business. So we know that's true. We know that there's dangers in getting involved in these corporations that have woke agendas, extreme leftist agendas, that have antichrist agendas, all these things. So th there's those are dangers. But I'm going to talk more about the spiritual dangers and maybe some of the psychological dangers of these. And I just want to give you the top three just to give you a grid for what to watch out for if your kids or your husband, your wife, whoever is engaging these. And the first one would be one the issue of being disconnected. Now, we live in the most disconnected generation in history. People are feeling like they're not a part of their own world. They're feeling disconnected from themselves, their own talents, their own abilities, their own skills. They're feeling disconnected from their core relationships, disconnected from their purpose. And so when you get into a virtual space and you start feeling connected and the serotonin, the dopamine, all the things that happen in that space, let alone a spiritual implication where you can develop a lot of relationships around playing games or entertainment or interactivity, that's not real world stuff. You're not working through character. You're not working through um, the deeper things that create a uh, meaningful relationship, you actually could be involved in that world for quite a while. And I remember watching a lot of people who are involved with online games like World of Warcraft or Diablo or these types of games that are on there, Call of Duty, and they live their relational social life through that. And then when the game ends or when there's when they lose attention for the game and they don't have friends that are merging or moving on with them or transitioning with them, they actually lose their community and they lose a sense of self. And they realize a lot of what I built was around a playing field, just like we can build life around the people we go to school with or the people we work with. And then we leave that organization and we no longer have that connection. And so online virtually is even more intense than that because you're building these online connected relationships that don't have an offline presence in your life. And they can give you a, a, a sense of fulfillment in the moment, but they can oftentimes leave you feeling very empty. And psychologists and psychiatrists are looking at this right now and doing a lot of studies on this to find out what that level of disconnection when it's technology, virtual reality connection, that then feels disconnected, how much more painful this is and how much it's more hard to reattach to real life relationships. And this is the thing. And I think spiritually, the enemy is trying to disconnect us from ourselves and from the world around us. And so if he can get us caught up into a virtual world that doesn't really have true consequences to our future, good or bad, it's just something that we're entertained by. And then we get stuck there as our primary source of relational connection and connectivity. We could really find ourselves going down a spiral of eventually depression and feeling a purposelessness that can lead to suicidal thoughts, those kinds of things. So these are, it's a big deal. Also, we don't know how, in, in the midst of disconnection, we don't know how these devices are rewiring our neural pathways because there is studies right now with brain doctors, with people who study the mind, and they're looking at our neural pathways and how they light up, and it's different. This is activating our brains differently than any other technology in history has. And they're not sure the long-term effects, especially on a child or a minor. So most neurologists will say, don't let your children use this for extended periods of day. And they think extended periods is more than 30 minutes to an hour if you read most of those studies because their, their minds are getting remapped or rewired in ways that we don't know how it's going to affect them long-term. And so again, if you have a kid who's on for three to five hours a day or more on virtual reality or augmented reality, it's rewiring them in a way that isn't how they were meant to be wired from God. And so that means that we have to figure out how to to maintain our wiring and be able to use these as whatever they are for in our lives without getting lost in them and creating disconnection. The second thing Two. that's really important in this is that it creates addiction in a way that even uh, just normal pads, devices, 
phones, video games don't. Because you're in a place to where it's so real that it's hard to separate the reality. And it's so exciting. And again, it gets so many of your emotions involved. And some of these developers are doing an incredible job. I played a few of the games. I played one of the, one of the games called Half-Life Alex about a dystopian future. But in the aliens have taken over. And it's based on their best-selling series. And I, I just remember how real it felt. And I had a hard time, like, it was scarier over the... the the, the thrill jumps, you know, like when something jumped out at me, it was as if I was in beyond any horror movie I've ever been in, even though it wasn't that scary, because I just wasn't expecting those jump scares that, that intensely, um, because it felt so real. It felt like I was in that world. And so there's there's things that happen with addiction where people like living in that world more than they like living in this world. There's books about this. There's, there's all kinds of novels that have been written about this potential future, but we're here and we're watching it. So there's people I know one of them is a young person in my life who she has said, like, I like the video game world, especially the online world, more than I like my real world. And again, the moment you say that, that's an addicting statement. That shows that you have an addiction in your life, that you're out of balance because you shouldn't like living in a virtual world and wanting to spend all your time there more than you like your real world. And that can be part of your world, but the moment you cross over means you're going to sacrifice good relationships health, life, family, like the marriage relationship, mar kids' relationships, grandkids' relationships, for something that is just not a successful alternative that will bring you the same level of fruit, legacy, purpose. And as a Christian, we're called to build not just us, but our children and our grandchildren and legacy. And you can't really build legacy online if that's your primary occupation of all of your free time. And I think of it as like, you know, we have 40 hours we typically have to work, and then we have 40 spare hours that are non-sleeping hours. And we have to be productive in that time for relationships, for passions, for purposes, to, to help people in need, all those things that Christian virtue is. And when you give that extra 40 hours to an addiction online, you're losing not only your kind of come to your work life with way less of a measure, measure of energy, but you're also going to be ripping off the people that you're called. Maybe you don't have them yet. Maybe you're not married yet. Maybe you don't have kids yet, but you're ripping off the potential for those people because you're supposed to be developing yourself into somebody and into something. And so even, you know, I've watched people who are hobbyists who get on YouTube, but they're in YouTube school. And that's like so different than just watching endless Netflix entertainment and not actually developing yourself, but like actually like learning something from what you're going after and becoming a better person and becoming the best version of you you can become. That's truly who we're supposed to be. And so sometimes people who have an addiction to technology when it comes to scriptures like John 10, 10, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I've come to give you an abundant life, more life than anybody else around you, is what Jesus is saying. Well, that's only true if it's through him. If it's just, I want to do, I want Jesus so that I can do whatever I want to do, you're not going to get that same quality of life. And so that's the second biggest, uh, maybe, warning I have for technology is that, and this, specifically this technology is that's very addictive. According to the 2022 survey, on internet users in the United States, nearly half of the respondents, 48%, considered themselves addicted or somewhat addicted to digital devices. A recent 2023 survey of people who are uh, viewing augmented reality or virtual reality, 70% uh, of them said that it's addictive from the first time they use it, that they want to be there more, and they think about it offline uh, more times than people think about just being on the internet. So we're finding, you know, with children that they're smart devices if they're giving it to them too young, they're having the same effect that if they if you remove that smart device from them, they feel like a limb is being cut off psychologically because it's part of their existence now. And so if you give the younger people are that you give them devices and free reign on those devices, the more damage it can cause long term for addiction, which is point number three. Three. One of the, the third biggest danger of maybe this virtual reality besides just the, your neural pathways being rewired besides addiction, besides disconnection is if parents aren't helping children, which we haven't had these devices, they're new. So if we're not helping children regulate what's going on in their lives, or if we're not regulating ourselves, then we're giving ourselves over to something that it's going to lead us. It's going to, it's going to overtake our lives. We're going to watch people not only with addiction, but children are going to be able, will not be able to separate themselves because they're still developing and forming. And so I'm going to encourage you if you're in charge of this, in a child's life, less is more. And I, I can't tell you how many parents I've talked to have said, just for Instagram or for TikTok, I wish I would have given my teenagers those when they're 16 or older because they just, they're so addicted and this is so much part of Snapchat, so much part of their life now. And just think about augmented reality, we can go on and chat with your virtual avatars and 
do anything, say anything, be anybody you want to be, and there's no one monitoring and there's not the same checks and balances that happen in real life relationships and so you can get into some really strange things and i know i went into the virtual chat on uh, metaquest and it was weird it was like people were approaching me and they had all kinds of identities we think pronouns sometimes are weird when people are trying to use pronouns in the ways that they're using them when it comes to you know zezer and those aren't words and devil she devil and all those things when it comes to not just the he she's and whatever they is and it gets even more extreme as we go online virtual avatars not only do you not know who or what the person is but they have formed an identity there that they believe in and that's a very big danger to children and you don't know how old the person is or who they are because no one has to reveal that and there's no real age checks and so i've talked to people in games that it's just some of the conversations have come up have been so concerning for their mental health and there's no way to help that report that to do anything about it because it's not really monitored even though there's all kinds of ways that a social media company might help to monitor it it's not truly monitored so i'm going to encourage you if you're going to engage in apple glasses create a plan create a family plan create an individual plan how much um, time are you going to allow yourself or those family members to be on it how are you monitoring it how are you processing with somebody what you're experiencing on there if it's different than what you're experiencing offline and how are you processing that when there's things maybe that come up that have sexual nature or when there's things that come up that have something that like a totally different identity or perception than you would even understand because we're being exposed to things at a mass level that we've never even thought of before or imagined before and anybody with any kind of mental illness or anybody with any kind of preference can be on there interacting with you in a wide open space in a way that maybe you wouldn't give them the same ground if they were if you were downtown and you saw somebody who seemed uh, mentally ill, you may not even give them the time or space, but when you're online, you don't know who's who. You don't know how to differentiate. So I'm gonna encourage you to be really careful and create a plan and create a place where you process these things and don't create your primary life online. That's the biggest key. Don't create your primary life and where you get the most enjoyment online. That was never God's intention and it's not the right intention for these devices to be used that way. And I hope that helps. And let's talk in the comments all about this. Let's talk about, have you experienced virtual reality, augmented reality yet? What was your what was your experience in it? Do you have somebody in your life that you're concerned about with it? Let's pray for them. Also, are you enjoying something? Tell us what you're enjoying on it. I know I've been enjoying different games on it here and there. And so let's talk about this in the comments and I'll see you there. <laughs>